Um, I'm Dr. Shauna Naidu. I am the coordinator of the honors concentration in MCB. Um, I'm also an academic advisor. And uh, first of all, let me get an idea of who all is here. How many of you are freshmen? How many of you are transfer students? And sophomores or beyond that are not transfer students? Okay. Good, excellent. So all of you um, are in an appropriate, you're, it's good that you're all here. Um, those of you, who I'll say up front and I'll repeat this again later on when I go over who can apply and when. Those of you who are freshmen now, it's good that you're here getting the information, but you will not apply this semester. You will apply next semester, okay? I may or may not have a live in-person information session again in the spring, so it's good that you're here now so you can ask any questions that you might have. Okay, so today we're gonna go over the, an overview, the benefits, why would you wanna do MCB honors, um, who is eligible to apply, um, what you need to have on your record to be able to apply, and then once you're in, what do you need to do to complete the program? and be retained within the program. Those are sort of the same, but not exactly. And uh, I always get a lot of questions on how this overlaps with James Scholar, so I'll talk about that. And then I'll talk in the last part about um, what you need to do in terms of actually applying what the process is, okay? Um, so the MCB Honors Concentration is designed for students who plan to go on for further education, either in professional school, such as medical school, dental school, nursing, whatever it might be, and I did, I sort of, those are all health professions, but any other kind of professional school, or students who are planning to go on to graduate school. Um, you will experience more interaction with the faculty because you will be participating in honor sections that are taught by faculty. You will have more contact with and in-depth exploration of the material. And that doesn't necessarily mean, it's not like merit. If any of, who, who knows what I mean when I'm talking, when I say merit? A few people. Okay, merit is, a, is different than what you do in honor sections. Um, so hopefully that'll come across as I talk, but if anybody has questions, they can, they can ask me. Um, one of the biggest number one benefits that I hear students feedback about is the cohort. So you will be going through the honors sections with a group of students that you will be together with in multiple courses and so you really get to know each other and get to work together well and there's very strong friendships, even marriages that have come out of that, um, those cohorts. So, um, well, okay, one, but still. <laughs> um, and uh, I missed one last thing, what was the last thing? Smaller class size, yes. We do try to cap the honor sections at a slightly smaller class size. Okay, thank you. Um, who can apply? So the MCB honors concentration is a subcategory of the MCB major. So you can't be in MCB honors and be in biochemistry or IB, okay? So those are two majors that we, you can't do along with MCB. Pretty much any other major, if you wanted to do a double major, you can. Um, if you're a biology freshman who's a biology undecided or already declared as an MCB major, it's actually pretty easy as soon as you meet the acceptance required, as soon as you're accepted into MCB honors, we'll just change your major for you and it'll be, it, the college will do it and you won't have to do anything. That's pretty straightforward. Um, other majors who are not MCB, let's say you're a physics major or chemistry major, you have to meet the regular declaration criteria for MCB, which I'm not going to go over it, but it's very, I mean, it's, it's, ours for honors is more rigorous than that. So it'll probably pretty much be automatic. Uh, but you do have to change your major to MCB honors. You can't hang out in another major and then start being in the concentration. If you're outside the College of LAS, let's say you're coming to me from engineering or something, you do have to meet whatever ICT requirements LAS has, which is intercollegiate, intercollegiate transfer ICT, and that's basically attending a meeting, an LAS meeting. So that, again, it's not that rigorous, but I have to kind of put all these disclaimers in there. <laughs> if you want to do a double major or a dual degree, dual degree means two different majors in two different colleges, so say engineering and MCB or ACES and I'm sorry, engineering, LAS, ACES, LAS, business. Um, you have to make MCB honors your primary because we charge differential tuition. So that's all kind of behind the scenes. Your records officer will help you deal with all that. I think next one. Okay, so um, ideally, 
you should have completed or be enrolled in MCB 150 on this campus in order to apply. That's not gonna, uh, that, that's, that's mostly for, um, actually that's, that's the ideal situation for anyone. Next, click. Um, we do accept transfer credit, for those of you who are transfer students, or proficiency credit, meaning you took the proficiency exam and you got proficiency credit for MCB 150, but we will not accept AP credit unless you're using it because you're already a biology major, so you already got to use your AP credit, but you skipped over 150. That's kind of meaning to say if you're, say, a chemistry major, we're not going to take your AP credit, AP credit for MCB 150. We're going to make you take it, okay? Um, this is a pretty much no way around this. If you do not get end up with a B plus or better in MCB 150, you can't be in the honors concentration, okay? Um, really, I, I try to be really careful when I talk about grades and what, what we're looking for in grades because I don't want to give the impression that there's some kind of elitist thing that we're looking for in terms of students having the top grades. The reason why we have the grade requirements that we do is because these grades tend to be strong predictors of the students who can make it through the program and, and complete all of the other requirements of the program. If you typically didn't do that well in MCB 150, then the chances of you continuing to do well in the rest of the courses are less, okay? Um, we also look for a grade in at least one chemistry lecture of a B plus or better. Sometimes a B would be acceptable under certain circumstances, so I kind of didn't bold that one as much, but typically that's what we're looking for, a B plus or better in at least 102 or 104, okay? Next. Um, so freshmen, as I mentioned before, you should apply in the spring. You will have either completed MCB 150 this fall or you'll be taking it in the spring. And if you're taking it in the spring when you apply, I will look at your midterm grades because I won't have your final grade. Um, so, uh, and then so the typical timeline, and you'll see that I, there's been a change, okay? So for any of you who've been around a little while and may have heard any of this before, um, we've actually changed the way things are structured to make it more flexible and to allow more students the ability to apply to the program. So um, I'm gonna be in a minute talking about the typical timeline and then what I'm calling, for lack of a better term, the offset timeline. So, um, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. So you're gonna apply in the spring semester if you're a freshman and those for students who are typically planning to take MCB 250 and 251 in the fall. Those of you who may be sophomores or transfer students, basically we want you to apply as soon as possible. Um, the sooner you apply, the more time you have to complete the, all of the required coursework. Um, and t you know, preferably it's, again, with the typical timeline, meaning before you took MCB 250 or 251, but if not, you can apply during that semester as well. Next. Um, so it may be possible to apply while taking later courses in the core than even 250 and 251. So let's say you're already in 252. It may be possible for you to apply. What happens at that point is I have to sit down with you, look at your schedule, and see if you have time to finish all the work. That would be the same as if you were changing to any other major. They would sit down with you and say, hey, do you have time to finish the courses in the major? Okay. Um, one other little caveat is under some circumstances, you might be allowed to substitute, and we've got the core work, which I'll talk about, and the advanced work. You can sometimes substitute one of the, an extra advanced thing for one of the core things. But again, don't worry too much about the details of that. If you have a special circumstance, we can talk about it individually. Next. Um, so what am I looking for when I'm screening applicants? These are things I'm looking for, not necessarily written in stone, except for the grade in MCB 150. So um, ACT score of 29 or greater is typical. And I do, I look at the cumulative. I don't do a breakdown just because it's too, it becomes too messy. And it's really only a small, tiny predictor of your performance in college, not the whole thing. So that's one thing I look for. Um, you, to be admitted, this one is written pretty much in stone. <laughs> you have to have an average cumulative GPA of a 3.5 or higher. This is why we don't take applications from first semester freshmen because we don't have any GPA for you yet. Um, but by the end of your first semester, we would expect to see a 3.5 or higher. Yes, question. 
We will look at that, but what we will do for a transfer student and also any, um, any freshman in the spring who only has one semester on this campus, we would make their, um, we make their acceptance conditional upon certain criteria. And the criteria um, vary slightly from student to student. For example, a transfer student, we might say, you are, it's contingent upon you, re, you know, I love you, you're great, you're in, contingent upon you receiving a 3.5 GPA on this campus by the end of your sem first semester here. Um, or for second semester freshmen who's ta currently taking MCB 150, it might be contingent upon you getting that B plus or better and MCB 150 by the end of the semester. Yes? Uh, what if we're not, we don't have um, mathematics That's okay. That's just, yeah, that's fine. In fact, a lot of students got AP credit for math, and that's fine. I just throw that in. And even that can be a little bit tricky because a lot of times students' GPA, especially freshmen, can be highly biased and influenced by a poor grade in a math course, say a five credit calculus course where in which you got a B is going to greatly affect your cumulative GPA when you only took 15 hours that semester. So I do look at all those things and I, I try to be, I, I try to use the grades to give me an idea of how I think you're gonna do in future and the math course is not that predictive of how you're gonna continue to do so the chemistry is actually more important. Okay, um, so that's why B or better, B, B plus or better, kind of a little hedgy there. And then the biggest one, you know, I've got that really bolded is the motivation, the motivation to do it. And I gather that from both the essays you write on your application and then the interview if you get an interview, okay? Um, you have to apply, and I'll talk about the application, submit the application, obviously, you have to apply. <laughs> and uh, you have to get a letter of recommendation. Um, the letter, I can't remember if I have another slide on this, so I'll just say it now. You get a letter of recommendation from a professor or graduate student on this campus. I know that's difficult for some transfer students. And sometimes, under some circumstances, I will accept a letter from a former institution. But no high school letters. And, um, and for, first semester, for, for freshmen, I, you should think about it now so that you can think about who could you ask that you know this semester. Because so if you ask somebody next semester, they will only know you for a few weeks before they can write your letter. Um, last semester, my TA was here um, teaching assisting um, IB 150. And this semester, she's at a different university. That's OK. Yeah, that's OK. They don't have to currently be here as long as they, when you were here, yep. Mm -hmm. And there is a form, and I'll talk about that, I think there's a form on the website for the, for the letters. Okay, next. Um, so, what do you have to do once you're in? So if you're in, the way the program works, and if any of you have explored IB honors at all, you'll see some big differences between our program and theirs. They do require some extra coursework that is, um, for example, extra statistics courses, extra math, higher level physics or higher level math, some various things like that. For us, it's not like that. You have to do everything that an MCB major does, the same level of physics, the same level of math, the same number of courses and all, except for the few things that I'll mention next. So you have to complete honor sections in all of the MCB core courses. So the MCB core is, not 150, that one doesn't, it's not included. It's 250, 251, 252, 253, and 354. Five courses. Each course has an honors section. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. There is a discussion section for the lecture courses. Everybody who takes MCB 250 takes a discussion section. Honors students will, if possible, and we may vary this depending upon how many people we get in and out. We try to group them together in the same discussion section that goes with the course. But the material that you're doing in that section is the same as everybody else is getting. You just get usually a more experienced TA, a smaller class size, and your honors cohort, okay? In addition to that, you take a separate course that is under MCB 297. That's a one credit hour graded course that is taught by the fac uh, faculty member. That is where you're doing the enrichment honors work. The two of those together 
give you the honors grade and the honors credit for the lecture course. You have to get a B minus or better in both the lecture course, 250 for example, and the honors discussion 297A, which is the one that goes with 250, in order to get the honors credit for that. And in the end, it'll be one course and four that, that you get credit for in terms of Jane Scholar and four hours of honors credit. Okay, any questions so far? I know that's kind of, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> for the labs. Again, we try to group the honor students within the same lab section, but it's the same labs that everybody else is doing. Um, then you have a one hour extra. I teach the honors lab discussions that go with 251 and 253. And um, you earn two hours of honors credit for the lab and one hour of honors credit for the discussion. Now, um, what the professors teach in that extra discussion for the lecture courses is typically about reading and writing scientific research, mostly reading and interpreting. And here is where those of you, how many of you are pre-med? Okay, that's like almost everybody in the room, but not quite. Um, for those of you that are pre-med, this is where this is going to be a huge benefit for you. Any of you taken the MCAT yet? I will Not, be. Yet. Not yet. Okay, I have already gotten feedback from some of my students, my honor students, that the two most important things that they had to prepare for the MCAT were MCB 354. The new MCAT is very heavy on biochemistry, so that course was big. Number two, honors discussion sections, because the new MCAT is all about reading passages, looking at data, interpreting what you see. And that is what they do in these honor sections. They read research papers, they look at data, they interpret it, okay? So if you're looking for a good reason, if you're a pre-med, that's a good reason. And you don't get that in almost any other class that you take on this campus. Okay, now for the, dis uh, the lab discussion sections, um, I've actually revamped those recently. And we, uh, for both 251 and 253, we do a semester long project. Um, 251, we're doing a synthetic biology um, project where you sort of uh, imagine a problem you'd like to solve with a, with a biological creation. And uh, we work on that, all, do a lot of team activities and teamwork in there. And then in 253, it's a protein it's a protein, um, it's not synthesis, it's a protein design, that's the word I'm looking for, it's protein design. Um, and again, it's a semester long project that you work in groups, lots of group work. And um, for those of you who are not planning on going to medical school, these things are still very important enrichment activities for you because you learn, in my sections, you'll learn a lot of teamwork and that's really something that's very, um, very, up there on the list of skills that companies want when they hire people. So teamwork, creative thinking, problem solving, um, and of course reading research papers and all is great for those of you who plan to go to graduate school. Um, we also do a seminar, a couple of seminars that you need to attend outside of class. Um, any questions about these honors sections and what's the content or anything like that? Yes? Is it, is it all right to take a merit section and an honor section? The question is, can you take a merit section and an honor section for the same course? And the answer is no. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. One, we feel that that's one student taking up a lot of resources when those courses are in such high demand. And then the other one is, it's too much time on one course for you. Just a person is not gonna wanna take three credits at 250 and two more credits one for, it's just, and it's too much time. It's too much time. It's not in your best interest, really. Yes, question. So, like, I'm in the, I'm in the merit for 250 right now. Mm -hmm. So, like, theoretically, if I were to get in, you would drop the merit, which would drop Actually, you know what? That's a very good question that's never come up <laughs> because this is new. My guess, and I, I'd have to guess, my guess is you'd keep that, and then the next semester, and I'll talk about doing the offset, the next semester you'll be taking the 297A that would have gone with 250. I'm in 297 right now. You're in 297 right now? Yeah. And you're also in merit for 250? Yeah. See, well, you got by. I mean, they just didn't, it, that's fine. Yeah. 
It's fine. It's we normally, I mean, it's, there's nothing that prohibits a student from registering like that. We just normally discourage it because it's just too much time. But there's no, it's not going to, it's fine. So like, I, but I'm not in the honors discussion for the lab. For the lab, yes. So if I got rid of merit, because I'm at 18 credit hours mm -hmm. right now, so if I got rid of my merit, I probably, I mean, I'm the one who's teaching it. I probably wouldn't let you add it now anyway, even though it's technically within the time frame because you'd already have a bunch of stuff to make up. We would have you take it next semester. Okay. And I'll talk about that offset schedule in a minute. Next. Okay, so this is, now here's where I get to talk about the timeline. So the typical timeline is, and, we're, and these um, letters, A, B, and C, have just recently been changed. So if you try to look it up in the class schedule, it'll look a little different. But this is how it's going to sort of play out. Normally, you would take 250 with 297A, 251 with 298A, preferably in the same semester, say, the fall semester of your sophomore year. Then the next semester, you take 252 with 297B, 253 with 298B, and 354 with 297C. That's the normal timeline. Next. Now, there's an offset timeline. So the offset timeline would be for a student who is already taken 250 when they apply, hasn't taken the honor section. So what they will do is when they're taking 252, that's when they'll take 297A. And when they're taking 253, they'll take 298A. The content in these courses is related to some extent to the, to the lecture course but it's not dependent upon it. So doing this offsetting is not going to really hamper you in any way. Then you would take 354 with 297B and 298B would be sort of a standalone because you've already finished both of the lab courses. And then the 297C would also be alone. Uh, just a second. This is why it's a little bit more difficult to start it even later than this. Because as you see, you have to take these three 297s in order. You can't take more than one in a semester. And the same for the 298s. You have to take them in order and not more than one in a semester. So it, if you start later, you have less time to finish them. Question. Because you can't be a biochemistry major and an MCB major anyway. And so the MCB honors concentration is a subcategory of the MCB major. It's a technical thing. Now, if you wanted to do certain sections, like you say, this is really great. I really wish I could take these sections. Then if you're a James Scholar, any open seats that I have, I open to James Scholars. And I want James Scholars to email me so I can put you on a waiting list so that I can hold a spot for you, OK? Last thing, other combinations, like I just said, are sort of possible. So for example, your combination might be you took 250 and 297A this semester, but next semester you're going to take 252 and 297B, but you've been taking 298A with your 253. You know what I see? So you might offset one set of them and not the other set kind of thing, OK? Um, I know it becomes a little complicated. <laughs> um, so, so that's the core, and that's the requirements. Now, um, there's a lot of tricky bookkeeping that has to do with changing your, uh, your grade. So you took 250, but you didn't take 297, and the next semester you take 297, and we retroactively change your grade for 250 to an honors grade. So there's a lot of funky bookkeeping that goes on, but I will have to sort of explain that on a one-by-one -one basis because it becomes so complicated it's hard to really understand what all is happening. However, one very important note again is in order to get the honors credit in the course, you have to get a B minus or better. So that means if you took 250 and you applied to the honors, but you didn't, um, you didn't, you, you, you're taking it now, let's say you're taking it now, and you apply the honors concentration and I accept you, and you get a C plus in 250, that's not going to work because I'm never going to be able to give you honors credit for the 250 because you didn't get the grade. So there are some circumstances that might make things tricky. Okay, so the other half. So once you've done that core, the only additional coursework that you have is the, what we call the advanced honors courses. And you have to do four things. And I will go through what those options are. One is to take an additional three, and it says five because that's old. We used to have a five credit. We don't anymore. Three to four credit advanced MCB course. Actually, I take that back. It's actually a one to four credit because we will also count 
the one credit advanced course. So I should change that. We have an additional one to four hour advanced NCB course from the approved list of advanced courses. So there's a list of courses. We put it out every semester. It's on the website that are approved for advanced hours. The normal major requires 15 hours. If you take any other advanced course beyond the 15 hours, it counts in that category. Okay? You can do that once. You can't just say, oh, I need four things. I'm going to take four extra courses. You can take one extra course and you have to do something else from the rest of these categories. Number two would be an honors project in an advanced course. Now that one can be part of your 15 hours that you started with. So you're taking MCB 300, that's one of your courses for 15 hours. You do an honors project in it, that works. Again, one time for that. Um, there's also an honors, there's also a few of those courses that have an honors section. I think I have that listed later. Um, MCB 290, most of, our, most of my students in the honors concentration I would say 95% choose to do undergraduate research. You don't have to to finish the honors concentration. It is easier to, to do it if you're planning on doing research anyway, but the amount of time commitment in the end is about the same. So whether you spend 15 hours a week in a research lab or 15 hours a week or less on an extra course that you decided to take, it all comes out evenly. But what generally happens is most of my students want to do research anyway, so they see this as like a, a bonus that, oh, I'm gonna do that anyway, so great, it counts for honors. For the research, you can, um, count that one up to two times. And again, most of my students take three or four or five semesters of research, that's great, but you can count only two of them towards your four things that you need. Senior thesis, though, can be applied, can count. So for the students doing research, these um, number one and number three and four are usually the, what they do. So they do one honors credit in a course, no, actually not number one, number two, the last three. They take honors credit in a course they're taking anyway for 15 hours. They do two semesters of 290 and they write their senior thesis and that's their four things. Okay, that's typical. Um, next. A few other things are, uh, we do sometimes have some special topics courses that count. Hit that again. Um, Oh, if you do a study abroad in one of the MCB approved study abroad programs, which is a year abroad in Newcastle or a semester abroad in Stockholm, Sweden, um, those will count towards your four honors requirements. Um, the advanced discussion section is just uh, some of our advanced, a few, a handful of our advanced courses have an extra discussion section you can take for honors credit. And then there's a few courses we have that are advanced courses outside of the MCB major, like for example, an IB course or an advanced statistics course. And we have, I have a, a approved list of those courses and you can take one of those as one of your four things, okay? Um, you have to consult me so we can put together a plan for you. Usually just right around your junior year, we start building the profile of what are the four things that you're planning on doing so we can make sure you get them done in time. Um, you can only repeat the 290 and the 493, which actually that typically doesn't work out, but um, always trying to add new options. Any questions about these advanced? Okay, ne next. Uh, so, overlap with James Scholar. So how many of you are James Scholars? Okay, good, that's a lot of you. Um, the, any course in the core that you end up completing for honors credit counts as your honors course for the semester. Okay, now they have, Jack put a little disclaimer in here because they've changed everything with James Scholar now and they have this point system and I'm not 100% clear on exactly how many points you need and what, call, what counts as a point and all of that. So I have a disclaimer now that you gotta consult with them but typically in the past it would be, most of my sophomores end up with four courses by the end of that year because they've done 250, 251, 252, and 253. Now, James Scholar doesn't let you bank for the future unless you tell them that's what you're doing. So if you say, hey, I'm doing four courses this semester, so next semester when I am studying for my MCAT, I don't wanna do any, they will let you as long as you tell them. So you gotta plan ahead. Um, the 297 and 298 count towards your total honors hours. That's important if you end up being eligible for Latin honors. One of the criteria for getting Latin honors, by which I mean summa cum laude, magna cum laude, cum laude, um, is having t one of the ways in which you can meet that is by having 25 honors hours. You get uh, 40, 15, 16, 18 with just the core courses. 
Okay, so you get pretty pretty far towards the 25. Um, the honors project or section in an advanced honors course will also count. A lot of students do that, so that gives you up. That's now you're at 21 already, and then um, and so you're pretty close to getting everything you need to be for Latin honors, assuming you get the GPA by then. Um, the last one, 492 senior thesis. Um, James Scholar, and in fact, I should have put 290 down here too because I'm fairly certain that now they will count 290 and 492 as your honors, as an honors event for that semester as well. So it's really pretty easy to meet James Scholar, James Scholar stuff if you're in honors concentration. And if you're not, you should self-nominate by the time you get in MCB honors. It used to be automatic because you only had to have the 3.5. Now you have to have the 3.7 to self-nominate. So there's a little bit of a gap for some students. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay, next. Ah, okay, so how do you stay? Besides having to complete those courses, like I said, what else do you need to do to make sure you get to stay in honors once you get in? Um, you have to maintain a minimum 3.5 cumulative or a minimum 3.3 major GPA, one or the other. If either one slips below that, or I'm sorry, if both slip below that, you get one semester probation to bring it up, okay? Um, and that probation is not an official part of your record at all. That's me with my records and my keeping notes that you're off on probation. And then if you, get off, if you get off, everything's fine. If you don't and you have to be dismissed from MCB honors, we just change your major back to MCB. And really, it doesn't show up anywhere that you, oh, I was honors and now I'm not. And oh, people are going to think all these, no, it doesn't really matter. Um, except for I'm always sorry to lose you <laughs> if that happens. Um, you have to compete, complete the core MCB courses that I've mentioned with honors credit, B minus or better, as I've mentioned. Uh, the 297 and, oh, the 297 and 298 are also graded. You also have to get B minus or better in that section. That doesn't happen very often that a student doesn't, but it does sometimes happen that you get an A in 297 and you get a C plus in 250 and so you don't get the honors credit. Um, as an upperclassman, I say take an average of one honors course per semester, but really what's more important than that is that one of the requirements for being an MCB honors is that unlike any other, well, there's two categories of students in MCB that have to meet with an advisor, students on probation and students in the honors concentration. Um, if you're in the honors concentration, you absolutely have to meet with me for advising at least once a semester. If you don't, I will remind you if I have to consistently, repeatedly remind you, and you don't, you will be dismissed, and I have dismissed people for that before. Um, so that's that. Next, uh, I have to put up my disclaimer about academic integrity. That's another thing. I do check the list. I check my list of students with the college office every semester, and if a student has been penalized for a violation of the academic integrity rules, they will be dismissed from MCB honors. I think the same is true for James Scholars. Next. Ah, so this is another question I get a lot. What is it, how does this show up on my transcript? Every one of you who's gonna be an MCB major, when you graduate, your diploma is not gonna say anything about MCB, okay? It says you have a Bachelor of Science in Liberal Arts and Sciences. The major that you are in is on your transcript, and if you're in honors, it will say that you've majored in MCB with a concentration in MCB honors. That's how that shows up. Next. So how do you apply? So applications for admission this coming spring semester are going to be accepted during uh, this September 4th through 28th. Actually, I don't have the application live. It's not gonna, usually I have it so it goes live like the midnight while I do the presentation, but it's not ready yet. So <laughs> the application will go live soon. Don't worry, nobody's gonna be, I know none of you are gonna go there and try to apply like today anyway, so that's fine. Um, it will go live soon. There will be a link to it on the MCB Honors website, and you can, um, it's a web form that you submit. I always recommend, most of the information in the form is just, when did you take MCB 150, and you know, how many years have you been here, what year are you, and all that, so it's all very basic information, really easy, quick to fill out. There is space for two essays. The essays, I believe, I have limited them to 500 words or less, and I do use those essays to screen, so please take your time and write me answers that 
give me some kind of insight as to who you are. I change the question slightly sometimes from year to year. Sometimes I don't, so I can't tell you exactly what the questions are going to be. But they're typical questions that you'd expect. Why do you want to be an honor student or something like that? It's not, it's not hard. But take your time, because I will tell you that the students who write me only like a few sentences when they have 500 words are not going to impress me with their application. Okay. Um, letter of recommendation, again, there is a link on the website that explains your letter writer needs to send me directly, either via email or regular mail, or they can put it in a sealed envelope that you bring to me that's sealed and signed across the flap. Anyway, I don't care. The letter is due by the time your application is due. I will not penalize you if your professor doesn't turn your letter in on time, but I will try my best to track them down as soon as possible because I can't review your application if I don't have your letter. Um, there is also a form that gives a checklist ranking. How's the student in this area, this area, this area? You download the form, you give it to your letter writer, and they check off their ranking on you and that kind of thing. Okay. Any questions about these things? Yes? So this is for if you want to try and join the program for the next semester you're applying now? Yes. If you're going to apply in the spring, it's the same deal, but the application period will be the month of February. So it's the same if you apply now or then? You can't apply now for next fall. Great. I'm not asking you the same. This is the application for spring? Yes. The application for fall will be about the same application. Probably be the same application. Is that what you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, she's asking if you can apply now instead of applying in the spring as a freshman. You can't apply as a freshman now. You can't apply now as a freshman to enter in the spring or even to enter in the fall. I'm not taking applic I do not take applications from first semester freshman, period. As if you're a freshman, you apply in the spring. Okay, that's right. Next. Um, so I'm going to post this um, PowerPoint online. If you're just really anxious and you absolutely have to know like what's going on, I have submitted my application and when is she going to call me about this and that, you can look at this later because this is my um, approximate timeline. I have an application deadline, I review them for about a week, then I send out invitations for interviews around this date, I conduct the interviews in a, you know, about a week later, then I offer admission about a week after that. So. Um, the important thing is that I like to have it all wrapped up and done by the time priority registration comes, which those of you who are James Scholars or Campus Honors or whatever, you register then, you want to know whether you're going to be taking these courses or not, and I want to have it all wrapped up by then. Okay, So that's the deadline where everything should be done. Next. Uh, so what should you be doing now? Okay, so if you're going to apply in the spring or even in the fall, first thing, Think about who you're going to ask for your letter of recommendation. And again, you want somebody who's going to be able to say that you are qualified to, to, be, to participate in an honors program. You're an honors level student. So it can be a professor that you had in class or a TA, or it can be, if you're lucky enough to be involved in research already, it can be your research professor. That's fine too. And it doesn't have to be a biology person. I've had letters from chemistry or whatever. It doesn't, matter. It doesn't even have to be science. That's not important. What's important is that they can say that this is a really excellent student who is focused on their schoolwork, really puts their best foot forward, you know, all the kinds of typical things that I'm sure all of you high achieving students would have somebody say about you. Um, apply via the web form by the deadline. Have your letter of recommendation submitted. If you make a mistake on the web form, and like let's say you submit it and you're like, oh my gosh, I really wanted to rewrite that essay. I just hate it what I did. Just submit it again. I will take the last one that you submit. Okay? Um, you should get an email confirmation that you submitted it. If you don't, then let me know because I have on occasion in the past had people's applications lost. It's very rare, but it has happened. Um, then you wait, and then I will contact you if you're going to be called for an interview. Let's see. One, any more? One more? I think that's the last one. Okay. Any questions? Okay, I have brought with me some fine 
M current MCB Honors Concentration students who would be happy to answer any of your questions about from a student's perspective. Um, so let's just go down the line. You guys just introduce yourselves. Tell them, tell them um, also if you're doing more than one major or if you're doing research or whatever, this little thing you want to say. Andy. <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is Andy. I'm a junior in MCB Honors. I'm doing research in Professor Jim Stiles' lab. So if you are sophomores and I'm taking his class, yeah. I'm <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm also a junior. I do research with uh, Dr. Schuler in her lab. Hi, I'm Abdul. I'm also a junior majoring in MCB and chemistry. I do research in bioengineering lab. It's with Dr. Rashid Bashir. I'm Jeremy. I am a senior, and I do research in Dr. Schuler's lab as well. I'm Aleka. I'm a senior in MCB, and I've done research in biological engineering and microbiology. So I often get asked the question, can you do MCB honors and fill in the blank? Uh, double major, study abroad, um, gosh, what else? I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. But yes, and yes, yes, you can. It is um, extra work, but it's very doable. I think students would say it's very doable. And um, you can fit in all. I've had, I've had two or three students who've actually had to triple majors, MCB honors, chemistry, and Spanish. Um, so there is definitely a lot of room for other things as well. Would you guys like to say anything specific about what you think about honors or just open up to questions? I'd be open up. That's questions. Questions for these guys or me. Can ask us to say things that you really want to know about. Like, yeah, they'll tell you honestly how much work it is and that kind of thing. Um, do you guys feel you have time to get involved in other things outside of research and like all the classwork? Yes. Yeah, so, um, mind if I say that? Like, I'm I'm currently an RA in PAR. I'm in a social fraternity. I'm I'm also running for, for, I'm currently vice president for one of my articles and I'm doing three credit hours of research and I'm doing this. So it's actually doable, it's a lot of work, but, it's, but it is definitely fine. Yeah, to add on that, I'm in a sorority too, and I'm also in Phi Delta Epsilon, like a medical fraternity, and involved with Habitat for Humanity, and a lot of emergency medical services, and. So it's really easy to get involved in this campus while doing the honors concentration. I think the important thing, what I've universally discovered is if you're organized, then you can do any, any of the things that you think that you might want to do along with MCB honors. Now that being said, I have had students who have started the program and said, no, I don't want to do this. I need to spend my time on something else. And it's not usually for grade reasons. I've had students with 4.0s leave MCB honors and say, you know what, it's, it's, I'd rather spend my time doing something else. And that's fine. It's not for everybody. So um, you know, I, we want students in there who really want to do it and are really motivated to do it. So. Um, does the research go by semester, or are you required to stay over the summer and conduct research? depends on the professor that you work for. There are some professors who say, I think Dr. Slough, I think, is one big one about that. He, he typically, they typically say, you know, when, you, when you're applying, when they advertise a position, only people who can stay over summers need apply. But I would say that most of the students who do research don't stay over the summer. Well, I don't know if that's most. It, it, there's a large number that don't stay over the summer because they can't. Because during the summer, you have two options. Like during the school year, you can do 290 for credit hours. In the summer, it's you can either do 290 for credit hours or you can apply for a f research fellowship, stay here for the summer, do research, and get paid. Mm -hmm. And we have given out 50 to 60 such fellowships in the last two years. It's only been a program for two years. Um, and the fellowships are from 2000 to $3,000, I think, for the summer. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but at least you're not paying tuition <laughs> on it. <laughs> so.
So, yeah. Oh, and there's another thing is, and this is, it's relatively small, but it's something. We often get asked about money, um, scholarships and things like that that are available. And I know those of you who are high achieving students, it's difficult because if you don't have financial e need, it's often very difficult to find merit-based scholarships. We have a merit-based, due to, due to the generosity of a former alum, we have a merit-based scholarship available only to MCB Honors Concentration students. Um, and it's it's not a lot of money. It's a thousand dollars, but every little bit helps. <laughs> and um, you can apply for that after one semester in the concentration. So, yeah. Yes. So, with the differential tuition that you pay with NCB, do you pay more on top of that to be honors? Okay. Nope. Nope. Other questions? Nobody asked them about how much work it is or anything. <laughs> how much work is in the honors sections? No? Yeah. Are any of you guys pre-med? Uh, yeah. 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 They're <laughs> <laughs> MCB honors um, concentration has pretty much the same percentage of pre-meds as the major in general. It's uh, every, t every once in a while a given cohort might be, I might have, you know, more like 70% pre-med and 30% non, which is, but the major overall is 80 to 90% pre-med, self-declared pre-med. So, and that's typically what I get in honors too. I do say that the people who are not pre-med sometimes feel like they're in the minority for sure. <laughs> um, but in lots of times it's in a good way because they're like, ha ha, I don't have to worry about that MCAT. <laughs> I don't have to worry about stressing out about all those things. So, so it's all right. Then they all, they get along together anyway. So, other question? Yeah. Uh, do you guys ever feel like the workload like is too much or like it's not worth it? Or do you just never have those moments? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm just asking like, because I have no, um, I feel like that going, like being introduced to like research papers and like just reading and like just like thinking critically about research papers, is, like, it does take a lot of time initially, especially when you first start out, but by the time like later on like in the honors concentration, I feel like now some of my upper level advanced courses, like I'm taking a neuroscience course, it's MCV. 461 and we're just reading research papers in class and I just feel like I can look at the paper like see like read the abstract look at the results and understand the figures like just pretty fast but some of my peers who might not have taken like honors didn't have those opportunities to discuss and like analyze papers previously so they're more struggling with it later on that's a really good point yeah Go ahead. How many people are in the MCB honors program? Right now, I have about 50 total, and that's sophomores through seniors. I'm hoping to, we're hope, one of the reasons why we made the changes that we did was to try to increase those numbers because there are students, very good students, very well qualified students who have not been able to apply because um, they missed they missed it during their freshman year. They didn't hear about it. Or they're transfer students and they're already taking 250 and it was just not feasible for them. So we're hoping to grow the program, not by lowering our standards, but by capturing more qualified students by making it more flexible. Are all the 297, like the A, B, and C, are they all like research paper? Like Varies by professor. Yeah, they're all taught, and, and the cha the professors who cha teach them change from s some sometimes from semester to semester, and they're we they're told they can do whatever they want. That's typically what they do. We're trying to develop it to be a little bit more structured, such so that there's a progression, so that in the first semester, you know, you're going to read the papers and really kind of understand that. The next semester, you might talk a bit more about how you would write. You know, what's the what, what's not that you would actually write one because you're not doing research, but what are the parts and what goes into writing those different parts, and maybe even talk about what the difference is between writing a research paper and a grant proposal. So we're trying to expand on that a little bit, but in typically that's what it has been in the past, just reading and understanding, and you just get more advanced. So at first maybe you take two or three weeks to read a paper, and then later on maybe you read one a week. So like for our class like at least for us in in a 
uh, Jim and Marty were just basically f giving us like one paper every week and all we were doing was just basically just reading the paper and dissecting that paper and that was it. When we were in 252, what was it? Yeah, okay. So what we did in that honors was we actually not only get to dissect the paper, but we also get to experience how do you present mm -hmm. a paper within 10 minutes. So that was also challenging. Now all us, I, us three are, are now in biochem and they are doing that same thing where we give you a paper, you have to understand it, and then you have to present it. N like not trying to defend their paper, but just presenting them, like telling what's right, what's wrong, all that, and still with a very short amount of time. So it's that is one of the other things I'll mention. There's lots of oral presentations. Well, I mean, you know, a couple of semester. I don't mean you're doing it every week, but you will definitely um, increase your writing and oral communication skills in these honor sections. In my class, I have, especially the changes that I've made, I, there's a lot of writing. Um, and in uh, the other honor sections, there's lots of presentations and a little bit of writing in those classes sometimes too. So, but again, one thing to keep in mind, you're taking this honor section, but you are getting an extra hour of graded credit. So when you plan your schedule, it's not like you're going to take 15 hours or you're going to take your normal you know, high achieving student taking 17 hours and then throw on two more hours for honors. That usually doesn't happen. This, you, you're adding those extra hours into your total. So then if you're taking 17 hours, seven of them are MCP stuff. So um, it kind of helps that you have that extra hour of credit to kind of work in. So you said there are lots of oral presentations. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's a trouble for non-native speakers in class? Uh, in international, there's no problem with it. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. It, it, in fact, it's good for you. It's good because then you get more, and, and it's in a very non-threatening environment, more so than a lot of your other classes because you're getting to know, I mean, maybe the first time it's not like that, but after a while, you know everybody in the class. So you're standing up and giving a presentation in front of a bunch of people that you know, and so it doesn't seem nearly as threatening. And usually, you very rarely do you do it by yourself. Isn't that true? You're almost always working in pairs or, or a larger group. Yeah. Yes. So do you use, like, if you continue with the same researcher throughout your 290s, mm -hmm. past semesters, do you use what you, like, gained in those to write your senior thesis? Yes, that's how that works, yes. Okay. Typically, yes. And another thing I'll say about research, sometimes I get the question, you know, do you, do you get to, uh, does MCB Honors Concentration help you get a research position? Officially, the answer is no, in the sense that I do not pair students up with professors. However, unofficially and increasingly, professors are the MCB honor students, and I commend all of you for doing this, have made such a good name for themselves and are so, they're so good in the lab that the professors who graduate them come back to me and say, do you have any more? <laughs> Do you have any more honor students to refer to me? And I, ha I keep a list of students who are looking for research positions within the MCB honors concentration. And when professors come to me and say, I have an opening, I send it out to that list. And that list gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so your chances of finding a position, I mean, obviously, if you, know, you don't like the research Dr. Slough does, and that's not going to help you any. You can go find your own. But it definitely is a little bit of a, did any of you get a position that way by an email that I sent you? None of you did, so they all found theirs on their own. But I do send those out, and they do get positioned sometimes that way. Any final questions before I let you all go? Yes? Great. So this senior, did you already take that cap? Yeah. Uh, how prepared did you feel? Um, very prepared. <laughs> <laughs> From the MCD honors concentration, or preparing by yourself? Or, um, well, I self-study for it, and this is you know, my personal preference. Um, so, you know, you can take a class for it, you can review even like old like class notes. I just got the Kaplan books and I self-studied for it. So that was the way I went about it. Um, in terms of, actually, yeah, like what I learned in honors concentration, um, they, when they restructured the MCAT, they made it uh, so that you would have to, they would give you some data and you have to glean information from it. And that's exactly what you do here. So. Um, 
I like definitely like my own preparation um, had a lot to do with it, but uh, just the skills you learn in honors concentration is very applicable. And I, and legitimately without leading them on, I have heard that from more than one honors student. Um, I, I sent an email to a couple of them who told me they got their scores back. I said, tell me what were the things that you, that were the most helpful to you? And that's what I heard. That and, as I said before, MCB 354. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to like give a spiel about this. Like I had something to say, but this guy was like, like jumping in questions. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, so if you're like on the fence about this, like you know, this is just coming from me. Uh, like just just apply, just just go for it. It is so rewarding. Um, you know, you're 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 in a class of like you know the elite MCB students, and only good can, only good things can come from that. And also just like, you know, the things that you learn from, from you know, honors concentration, as I was mentioning. Um, you know, as we like graduate and, you know, we go into careers, you know, that's not going to be just, uh, you read from a book or you just listen to lectures and you fill out a scansion and then, you know, that's going to be your career. You know, eventually, you know, you're going to be doing like real life things. So, you know, the reason why I love this program so much is because you know, you're reading papers, you know, you're reading science that actually happened, and, you know, you're conversing with professors that actually do that, and, you know, and you're, you're making these presentations, and, you know, these are all, like, the, these things, you know, it all brings, like, what we learn in the books to life, like, no pun intended. So, um, that, that was dumb, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. But, um, <laughs> but really, you know, you, you learn, you, you not only learn, it's it's not so much like you learn more content. I mean, you do, and it's all interesting. But you learn skills, and that's what like the honors concentration program has to offer. So um, when I say it's really rewarding, that doesn't mean like I'm, I'm able to like you know fill out a scantron better, but I'm actually able to like you know carry out science better because of this. Wow, I couldn't have said that any better. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, and you get to have me as your academic advisor. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, anybody who has a, a quick question um, that they want to follow up with me right afterwards to come up or with the students to come up and um, ask them. Otherwise, um, please, if you still need more information, two things I'll leave you with is one, feel free to make an appointment with me um, online or through the office. Or number two, And number two, please spread the word. So there was about 30 people here today. Um, I'm sure you know friends who couldn't make it. Um, spread the word. Tell them we're going to post the video online, um, this, the PowerPoints online. Anybody who wants more information, contact me. And um, I'm hoping to get a great group of applicants for this semester. Thank you.